Well, guys, it turns out that by 2030, North America will be making enough batteries to power every single car sold. Now, that's assuming Tony Sebra is completely wrong and the car industry maintains its current trajectory. It's still selling 15 million cars a year. Now, a lot of analysts are saying that won't happen. The car market in America will shrink. Autonomous cars will shrink it really, really quickly. And it's, a, and it's a hard to believe that. But once that technology hits, analysts are saying within a very short space of time, people won't want to be driving their cars. The car market will shrink. That will mean there'll be more than enough batteries for every single car made in America. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's phenomenal to see you. So what's going on here? Well, an enormous amount of money. I mean, billions and billions of dollars have been invested into battery production in the United States. Now, I don't know if Donald Trump being elected and potentially repealing some of these um, investments or these subsidies into the industry could have an effect on this. It absolutely could. I don't know. But North American EV battery capacity will grow by 1,000% between now and 2030 based on all the factories that are set to be built or are currently in construction or are currently ramping up battery production. And that means there'll be enough batteries to power more than 14 million vehicles in 2030 in America. This whole idea that Toyota has brainwashed people in America with, telling them there's not enough lithium, is completely, completely false. Planned annual electric vehicle battery capacity in North America rose more than 10 times between early 2021 and the middle of this year. Planned capacity rose more than 10 times. So this could increase even more than this. And I, guys, I made a video recently saying that I think there's overproduction planned. The reason I say that is because this does not include Tesla's plan to build a gigafactory manufacture CATL lithium ion phosphate batteries. It doesn't include Ford's plan to do the same thing. Uh, GM apparently planning on doing the similar thing as well. But that would make this production potentially 16 to 17 million, enough batteries for that many vehicles. Now, of course, some of this battery production, cell production might be used for things like manufacturing big batteries, you know, to support the grid. But annual lithium ion battery cell production capacity in North America will reach over 1,400 gigawatt hours in 2030. And a lot of this will be helping to get rid of coal and gas plants in America by basically soaking up the excess solar during the day and using that at nighttime. The Department of Energy says that this compares with only 120 gigawatt hours that were projected for 2030 in January of 2021. So we've gone from 120 gigawatt hours to more than 1,400. So the increase is obviously more than a thousand percent. This sharp rise in capacity planning comes as battery suppliers are investing in massive factories to match automakers' EV demands. And after the, the Biden administration passed federal incentives to spur development of a robust EV supply chain. So it really does kind of put paid to the idea that uh, Donald Trump's saying, EV manufacturing and EV batteries are a big hoax and it's all bad for America. It makes him, honestly, to me, sound like he's talking a whole lot of nonsense. Now, unfortunately, there's some nonsense coming from the Democrats and from the Republicans, so you kind of can't, like, which party do you pick, right, if you're an American? Anyhow, four takeaways from the report. Incentives in the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act and the 2021 Bipartisan Infrastructure Law push automakers and battery manufacturers to add capacity in North America. But between the passage of the infrastructure law in November 2021 and the Inflation Reduction Act in August of 2022, planned battery cell capacity in North America rose by 2030, rose to 587 gigawatt hours from 298 gigawatt hours. The Act's passage appeared to have a huge impact, with planned capacity doubling between August 2022 and July 2023. One other interesting thing that's been happening here is that even Panasonic, they've said legislation in the IRA in particular has been a catalyst. But aside from that, the battery chemistry is also intriguing. Now we have a Chinese company building a couple of battery factories in America. It's being kind of ignored for some reason. Trump's okay with it, I think, maybe. Maybe, I'm not sure. But lithium ion phosphate is growing 
and GM have canceled some of their planned battery factories that were going to be joint venture partnerships with LG Chem, where they'd manufacture Ultium batteries. Now, I think companies like Ford, they are waiting to, and Tesla, to be able to manufacture the new Shenzhen 2.0 lithium ion phosphate battery from CHL. They'll license that technology, then they'll build the fact they'll build the batteries themselves, but CHL will obviously give them the know-how on how to do it. And that will add to these numbers. But if you're one of these companies that is going to be building just traditional lithium ion fo- lithium batteries, lithium ternary batteries without ultra high energy density and the ability to discharge their power very, very quickly, you're going to have a problem because you're not going to have the demand you think you are. Pieces of legislation from the government, both pieces have incentivized local production of EVs, batteries, and parts. And that's true. EVs will only be eligible for Inflation Reduction Act tax credits if they contain enough locally sourced components. Those that contain battery components or critical mineral source from China will not be eligible for these incentives. So yes, that does mean Ford, GM, and Tesla can still manufacture CATL batteries in America, as long as they use components, parts, everything else from the US. Licensing the technology does not exclude them from getting these incentives from the government, assuming this isn't all changed by the Trump administration if they were to win the election. Nevada is the state with the most battery cell manufacturing capacity, largely because of the 38 gigawatt hour factory Panasonic Energy and Tesla jointly operate there. This facility will grow much further in the coming years, with Panasonic planning to expand production by 10% by 2026, and Tesla planning to expand production significantly between now and 2030. Other states are getting in on the action as well. Michigan projects to have 166 gigawatt hours of capacity by 2030, and that's more than any other US state. More than 100 gigawatt hours of capacity are planned in Nevada, Georgia, Kentucky, and Tennessee, according to the Department of Energy. Despite the fast pace of growth between 2021 and 2023, battery capacity plans have slowed down this year. About 1,400 gigawatt hours of North American lithium ion battery cell production are projected for 2030. Uh, That's only a, a tiny bit more than what was projected on the 1st of January earlier this year, so six months ago. The slowing of battery capacity growth, um, the media are saying, now here's a quote from Automotive News, this mirrors the slowdown in US EV sales growth in recent months. Now, maybe it could be that these people are actually, uh, companies are doing research. It's like, imagine um, someone sets up, ma- builds a McDonald's a kilometer from your house and then McDonald's doesn't just go, well, let's build another one a kilometer in the other direction. They actually do some research. So the media are trying to spin this as though, oh, EV sales slow down, therefore all these companies are going to slow down battery production. It's not about that. They're going, okay, 1,400 gigawatt hours, that's enough for the all of America. We don't actually need to make more than this. If we do make more, right, we know that Ford and Tesla and GM are planning additional capacity on top of this with these new LFP cells that are very, very advanced. If we do make more, um, where's the market for them? That's what it's really about, right? Even if every EV has is completely... Even if every car in America is completely powered by by batteries and batteries alone, nothing else, there's enough batteries there already. The Department of Energy's data is making clear the important role Canada will play in the development of North America's EV supply chain for things like lithium. About 136 gigawatt hours of lithium ion cell capacity is projected for Ontario by 2030, more than any US state except Michigan and Nevada. Meanwhile, there are plans for 70 gigawatt hours of production in Quebec, putting it ahead of states including California, Arizona, and Illinois. Now, it's worth pointing that out. California, right? There's still more EVs being made there than anywhere else in America, but the batteries are not being manufactured in California, and that's largely because of California's business red tape, regulations, taxes, all that stuff. Canada, though, is becoming a good place to invest, say, businesses. Canada is seen by many automakers and battery companies as a safe bet relative to the United States, where potential changes in federal policy after the November presidential election could lead to a slashing in incentives. That was one of the reasons Honda chose to invest about $11 billion to build EVs and battery cells in Canada. Honda Canada President Jean-Marc Leclerc told Automotive News in April. It's guaranteed money, Leclerc said, 
referring to the roughly $3.5 billion in incentives that Honda is getting from the government in Canada. As you can see, guys, there is more than enough batteries that will be produced for every vehicle to be electric, assuming that there's still another 15 million cars going to be sold in the United States in 2030. Now, many analysts say there won't be. They say the market could shrink by up to 50% by that point in time. That is probable at some point. Will that be 2030? It might not. It might be 2034. But the truth is, guys, the US and Canadian car markets will massively shrink because of automation. That will affect more dense cities first, of course, you know, places like New York. But eventually, car ownership will become a thing of the past for about 80% of Americans. So that's what Tony Sieber is predicting. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.